I am Joey Williams. I'm a community coordinator, and today we are talking about Total Water Tiller. This is Simon. Simon, what Hello. do you do? I am a designer on Total War Attila. I do a mix of battle and campaign design. Awesome. And you are going to be talking to me and the world about Horde Mode. Yes, I will. So it's a different style of gameplay than a standard Total War game, right? It's, it's a whole new gameplay mechanic that we've not done before in Total War and we've really kind of based it on the kind of Dark Ages and migratory events. So all these factions moving across the map, across Europe, finding new homes for themselves. So there's a lot of moving parts with that as well, so uh, different things that come into play. And so we're going to have a look maybe five turns if we're fortunate and see how that works. So we're going to play as the Ostrogoths and jump into a campaign and show you a little bit about them now. So the Ostrogoths, tell me a little bit about them. Yeah, so I mean the Ostrogoths were a faction of the time, originally formed from the Goths. So the Goths broke into two separate factions under two different kings, the Ostrogoths and the Visigoths when they were basically uprooted from their land. Hmm. And at the start of the game, the pair of them are both migrating factions, they're looking for a home, but at the same time they found themselves in the territory of the East Roman Empire. So the East Roman Empire don't really want them there, hmm. they're still looking for a home and trying to work out where to go. Yeah. So, you know, things aren't really great for the Ostrogoths at the start of the game. They're kind of surrounded, but, you know, with all the effect of the splitting of the Roman Empire, Ro Rome is weak now, right? There are gaps and there are opportunities for them to kind of come forward and become a powerful faction in themselves. So I say at the beginning of the game, you're weak, but you're going to build up, you have opportunities. And of course, since you're a horde, that opportunity can be anywhere you want it to be. Yeah, which is awesome. So you've got some cultural traits and some faction traits. Yep, so every single faction in our game has a cultural trait, as you can see down the bottom here, for example, the Great Migrators get growth when settling or initiating mm. a migratory style. So, you know, they get a lot of bonuses from going from mobile to being static as a faction. So kind of as a player, we really wanted to kind of promote you yeah. doing that and settling as a, as a horde. So this is very much a horde faction, yep. should, you, should you go there. You but it certainly begins as a horde and it's an ability that you can use in order to kind of position yourself. In general, it's much better for you to end up as a landed faction. You'll get access to kind of better units. So that's the ultimate chains. goal. That is your ultimate goal, yes. A lot more of a traditional faction. They're not there to kind of overrun the world strictly. They're there mm. to find a find a homeland for themselves mm. and then kind of push forward that way. Cool. So as you can see, they've got the cultural trait. Now all of the great migrator cultures will be sharing the same same set of traits. Yeah. And um, they also have faction traits. This is one of my favourites, actually. Um, basically, they're able to take over Roman settlements. Mm. and gain all the bonuses that Romans gain. So the Romans aren't that unhappy that they've gone there. That looks like it should require a more ha ha at the end of it. <laughs> but um, also, yeah, they can use the Roman military buildings and take the Roman units. You know, the Romans have some really strong, powerful infantry, which the Ostrogoths could really use, seeing as they're kind of very heavily into their kind of spear and pike infantry. And they've got some really strong cavalry as well, but maybe the Romans mm. and their Balistari, their crossbowmen, could really kind of help bolster their ranks and make them a more rounded force once they've settled. So. Impressive. I'm liking yeah. the Ostrogoths. Should we go into our campaign? Let's give it a go. Let's do it! So you'll also have noticed that they're um, one of our hard factions to begin yeah. with, so they've got quite a difficult start pause, as I said, like, because they're kind of on their own in the middle of the Roman Empire. They're not welcome. Yeah. <laughs> they made ready for war, so, you know, first of all, we're telling you, you've got to survive. Right, you know, and especially as a kind of migrating faction, survival is your key. You're really, you're quite vulnerable actually, because you haven't got walls or anything to hide behind. You're, you're, you're kind of out in the open. You're exposed yep. at all times, right? So you've got to kind of be careful about that, and you can manage that in different ways. So you can either kind of keep your hordes all together, so you have three or four horde tribes kind of going around in a pack, as it were, kind of protecting each other. That seems packs. safest. That is the safest way of doing it. Mm. But you could also, if you want to go for the kind of riskier but much, much more profitable option. You can kind of just spread out in all directions because, of course, you know, kind of like a Hydra, if you cut off the head and destroy one of their head forces, they'll still have two more <laughs> two more forces like left over that they can use. So, yeah, so this is the start. Survive till spring 401. I suppose the start of it is is there are two main stances for a war, right? You're either moving yep. or you're encamped, right? When you're moving, you can't, you don't really get the bonuses of your buildings, right? They're all packed up and you're carrying them around with you, mm. so you know they're not really going to be giving you any buffs or bonuses. But when you actually encamp yourself, you start getting those bonuses. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set my force into an encamp stance, and then we'll have a look at the kind of various bonuses that that will bring us. 
So I've got multiple stances. So ports have their own custom stances. So some that are more familiar to standard military forces. So you've got things like you can do a raiding stance. So you can start burning down enemy farmsteads. You've got mass migration, which is very similar to kind of double move or kind of fast move, force march sort of thing. Yeah. So it allows you to move a lot faster. But the, the idea of this one is it's more about getting somewhere quickly to settle yourself. Right. So yeah. it's about you know trying to get to Spain or something like that to actually kind of put down your roots. But also you have encampment. So encampment's got a lot of effects tied into it. Um, but to sum up, basically it lets your buildings start giving you an effect and it allows you to recruit units. You know, once again, you've got kind of standard building chains. So you can right click on your building chains and I can see kind of how this will go. You'll see that this slot is migrating settlement. So I can still see what would happen to myself if I had a city, but I can't build these because of course I haven't got anywhere to, yeah. anywhere to put down the roots. So I've just got my migrating buildings, as it were, and the bonuses they give. So when you're a horde, you can't recruit unless you're in an encamp start. So you're not allowed to recruit units. You can hire mercenaries. Mm -hmm. If you're desperate, then you yeah. can kind of handle the money that that's going to take from you. But you're not going to be able to just hire them. So what you do is you have different buildings, such as the shelters, which gives you Germanic levels. And you'll then be able to, with your force selected, this becomes focused and it's not greyed out anymore and you'll be able to recruit your units awesome. that you require which is cool yeah migrating tribes are also able to make new tribes should they want so their kind of currency as it were the thing that really matters to them is their population surplus their growth so as you'll see here in the top left hand corner you've got your growth so while you're moving around you don't gain your growth effects so your horde will never get you'll never get bigger yeah. but as soon as you're settled, you start gaining those effects, right? You're going to start growing, and this is really useful because this is how you pay for your buildings, right? So, as well as costing money, which you can get kind of through various sources, you know, raiding, fighting battles, building buildings, you can also have to spend your population in order to do it. So, you know, you can only build these buildings if you have the population surplus to actually construct that thing, and that's really, really good. Also, one important thing is that you've got fertility of different regions now. When is that of the land? Of the land, yeah. Right. So let me show you. We have a strategic overview map. And we have fertility rating. So oh. every province has a fertility rating, right? It goes from kind of bright, bright highlights of green for rich to red for basically barren lands where there's nothing to... There's, there's no food left. Mm. I can imagine it's just dust and Can you redeem an infertile land? Can it's you bring it back to life? Not really. They kind of Oof. it's a fairly kind of downward spiral, and especially with the climate change, right? Yeah. As the climate change comes kind of from the top of the map, everything's gonna get less and less fertile as you go, which is kind of at the time it's one of the driving force. There was a kind of little climate medium that happened during this period of the Dark Ages, mm. which kind of partially is what forced everyone yeah. to kind of move inwards, you know, and poor Rome's right in the middle, you know. A lovely place. The Mediterranean is a beautiful place to it be. It is, so, yeah. You know, everyone wants to be there. So it's as you can crowded. see, you've got the fertility here. Actually, the region I started in is quite fertile, but seeing as the Gepids are my friends, I don't really want to be kind of taking all their mm. food and stuff like that. So I think, I think Thracia, it's got yeah, it's fairly, fairly fertile because I've raised one of the settlements in it. However, I've lowered the fertility. Oh. I know. So you know, I can essentially make this into a barren land if I so choose. Um, I'm not sure I will at this point, but I can certainly give it a go. And also Constantinople at the bottom, the kind of the jewel of the East Roman crown. So I'm going to press tab again to go out. And I'm going to end turn once more. Integrity is really, really important for hordes as well. So as well as the kind of population, integrity is really important. Whereas when you're a kind of settled faction, your settlements will have a public order value. Your forces will have an integrity and your characters will have loyalty. Yep. Right? You've, got, you've got kind of three things to look after. And if you have a military force with a character in a settlement, you've got to keep all three of those things in check. You know, ignoring one of them could mean that the settlement turns against you and rebels. Yeah. Ignoring the character's loyalty, they might just take their army and kind of wipe the floor with you, as it were. So, but because there are no settlements, they don't have public order. If you go around raising settlements, that will affect your integrity. If a horde's integrity snaps, they will rebel. But unlike a settlement or a general where they may take one thing, mm. when a horde rebels, they take themselves and all their buildings yeah. and all their population with them. And suddenly you've lost that. You could have a horde that's got all your food, so you've made them kind of 
a farming horde, so you've encamped them, built lots of farms to produce food. If they they decide to break because you've left them in the snow and been raising cities with them, then they're basically going to leave you and you'll have to deal with the problems. Civil war, big problem. Essentially, yeah. I'm also probably going to talk a little bit about, so I'm going to end turn again. So I've got a building here. Okay, so I started building a Raiders Gathering, which is a level one military mm -hmm. building, but I broke my encamp stance and started moving. Yeah. Because I started moving, the building's on hold. It's not cancelled, it's not stopped, right? It's just on hold. As soon as I encamp again, just so you don't have to do anything on. else? You'll encamp no. yourself and then it will start again so next time? You're kind of meant to be a mobile force, so if you are encamped and you've been there for a couple of turns, if somebody's coming for you, and you can tell they kind of have blood in their eyes, yeah. you can just sort of like pack up the tents and just oh. get the hell out of there, right? You know. So it doesn't stop anything completely, it's just paused? No, yeah. it's just paused, nice. it's just kind of suspended a little bit. Kind of the one big thing that I've been kind of saying is that they're migratory, right? They're not. They're not a horde, they're not here to rampage, they're not here to destroy everything, they're here to kind of build up their funds and then find their home, basically. Yeah. They find somewhere they want to live. And this is a really core cool part of the game, right? So, next turn, what I'm going to do is I'm going to found the new Ostrogothic Empire in Trimontia. Why not? It's really close. Don't need to travel. You know, why go to the other side of the river when there's something perfectly good here? And it has gold which is a useful resource, which I can use to trade with people later on, you know. The Gepids are only just north of me, I should be able to eventually get a trade route to them and start trading. No, so you can go from this kind of horde playstyle to a standard yeah, in any the time. same campaign. So, Lovely. that's what I'm going to do now. So, the important thing to note is, when you take a settlement, you can choose to occupy, right? When you occupy any settlement, anywhere on the map, it will end your migration. You are no longer a migrating tribe, you are now a landed kind of traditional faction right at that point. So you've got to be very careful because if you've got multiple hordes floating around, as soon as one of those takes a city, all of them are like, right, we're, we're a proper faction now, we don't need all these tents, right? We're a normal faction, but you may only have one city, which isn't enough to support all your troops, right? If you built a huge horde and you take a single city, mm and you haven't really thought ahead with it all, you've got all these men to feed, and you've got a burnt city, which you probably blew up anyway in the process. <laughs> do not misclick occupy, should you not want to. <laughs> we do ask if, yeah, we do confirm. But, um, <laughs> but the real, well, the trick to do is actually to sit there and think, well, I've got, let's say I've got two tribes, mm -hmm. and there are two fairly rich settlements near each other. What I will do is I will position them both in a kind of shooting distance to those settlements. And then on the turn that I decide to end my migration, I can just kind of right. blitz them and just take the lot. Is the plan. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to go back into my normal stance, because of course you can't fight while you're in mass migration stance. It just lets you move really fast. And I'm going to attack. So, ah, oh, they haven't got any garrison left. That was easy enough. <laughs> well. Killed them all. So. I am going to occupy the settlement. So if you look here, occupying the settlement will end your migration. Yep. Right? It gives a conquest penalty. They're not going to be too happy with me, but, you know, that's fine. And a province instability, which is actually filtered by my faction trade. So I actually get slightly less province instability because I'm the Ostrogoth. So, as you'll see already, now I've got so many forces and this province did kind of smash it up a little bit. It did. Ah. So now you have to repair it. Now I have to repair it. As a migrating faction, I've now settled, right? I've kind of found my spot and, you know, maybe I'm not happy here, right? You know, I'm not really enjoying it in the middle of three shit. It's kind of not really doing well for me. So what I'm actually going to do is I can raise my own settlements. Now, this, this is going to hurt, right? It's, it's like kind of pulling off a plaster. It's going to hurt before I can heal, right? And I'm going to abandon all my settlements, okay? What are you doing, you would say? absolutely crazy, I am able to become a horde again. Very so interesting. I am now migrating. So you can go at any time with one settlement. Should have shown you last turn, but I promise you it's still here. Um, so any time you can go to your faction screen, which I will do a bit slow this time. So you go to faction, you go to summary, and this will say start migration. So you've got one settlement left, and you start migration. Also we talk about things that we kind of have to do with migrating, so it kind of push you towards historical things as well. So if you're, as you're a migrator, some of your secondary objectives, we are a sandbox game, we don't want to kind of force you to do anything you don't want to do, but we do give you these kind of nice little secondary objectives, which become 
historical, right? Things like owning Dacia and things like that. We try and kind of push you down a slight historical pathway with it all. And you definitely need that money. You do need that money. I certainly do. You, you really do right now. <laughs> you really do. Well, hopefully when people get their hands on it, they'll do a little bit better than I did. <laughs> that is your challenge. <laughs> yeah, do better, better than, than Simon. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been very enlightening. It is. I, I am oh, quite excited. One thing I could show you. So when I am a encamped horde, as you will see, as the tents, the tents oh. grow up, it's a really nice, lovely little animation there. So when I have my horde selected, I can create new hordes. Oh, lovely. Mm. So they cost, they cost gold, unless it's a family member. But I'm gonna raise a new army. So this is a whole new horde, right? I, I basically made a brand new city. <laughs> kind of, if you, if you think of it that way, like I've made a brand new horde, which can build its own buildings. It can have its own input into my faction economy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got its own armies, so it's its own fighting force. Like, you know, I can build it myself. I can kind of construct it the way I want to construct it and plop it anywhere in the map that I think is good for it to be at the time. And that's a really interesting new feature. Also, once you've built the kind of prerequisite buildings, you'll be able to recruit agents in here. So you've got spies, priests, and champions. You should be able to build in this screen. As I say, you need to construct those kind of migratory buildings in your encampment in order to get that. So it's going to take you a good few turns. It'll take you a while, yeah. yeah. It might be instant. And of course, also when you kind of end your, your hoarding, as it were, and you do decide to kind of settle down somewhere, you actually, all the buildings that you've built and you've constructed, that money gets refunded to you, right? Because oh. the buildings are gone, right? If I, as I've started a whole new migration here, I haven't... I haven't really got very much. I've got to kind of start again with my temporary, as you said, it's kind of very temporary yeah. stuff. So I've got to restart and rebuild all that. But when I do finally settle, all the money that I've spent on these buildings, I will get a large proportion of it back, which I can then put into developing the city. That's awesome. So we have spoken about a lot of things to do with Horde mode. The highlights, Simon, what, what are the highlights? So the big highlighting is you're kind of free to go wherever you want on the campaign map, right? You are, you are can, can completely just do what you want. It's so sandbox, really love that side of it. So the other kind of big thing is that when you're encamped, that's when you do all your kind of, you're building up, that's when you do your kind of economic play. Right? So that's when you build your buildings, you recruit your units, you replenish your troops and you hire your agents. Mm -hmm. Then you turn back into a horde and you start traveling again. Thanks for watching guys, thanks for showing us around Simon. Oh my pleasure. Good luck everyone. <laughs>